Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install SQL Server, SQL Server Management Studio, how to import a database, and then also how to import a CSV file. So with that in mind, let's head over to my laptop. Right, first things first, what you need to do is head over to Microsoft's page which allows you to download SQL Server. The link is in the description below or you can use the link provided on screen. Once you're actually on the website all you need to do is just scroll down and then you can pick either developer or express. In this one all I'm going to be just doing is selecting express. Click download now, save the file and then start waiting for it to download. Once it's downloaded just click on the file and then it will start to give you the options of which installation type you would like. Just select basic and then do accept and then pick where you want it to be saved. And this is also important to remember where you save it because that will determine where you put in the database you want to restore so you can view in Management Studio. So then once you're happy with where your location is, click install and then wait for it to download. Now that's installed, all you need to do is go down to install SSMS, which is SQL Server Management Studio. Click on that and then it gives you the option to download. Just come down to where it says download SSMS and click on free download. Save your file, wait for it to download. And once it's downloaded, click on the file. And then once it opens up, what it would do, it will ask you to install as I've already installed it. It's given me the option to repair or uninstall. But if you just install it and then once that's done, then you can open up SQL Server Management Studio. So once your SQL Server Management Studio is loaded up, you'll be prompted with the connector server screen, which will give you database engine as the server type. Your server name will be where your SQL Express was saved. And then your authentication is based on your username under Windows authentication. So if you click connect, it will then allow you to connect to start adding in your data. So as mentioned, how you want to get data from your local machine into SQL Server Management Studio so you can start playing around with the data. What you need to do is if you wanted to just install a database that has already been created or you're restoring it from another system, then all you would need to do is get hold of that particular file and then put it into the backup folder of your SQL Express saved location. And as an example, if you go to this link, which I've also put in the description below, this gives you the eventual work sample database that you can download and practice with. And you can pick which one you want from the data warehouse one to then load into your SQL Server Management Studio. And for this example, I've already downloaded the eventual works DW2019.bak. And then all I did was move it to my folder, which was where I saved my SQL Server download. And then within there, you go into the SQL Express that you've downloaded and then under MS SQL, you then go to the backup folder. Now, depending on your system, if you've got administrators, it will ask you for administrator access. So if you're not the administrator, you might need to get that access, but if it's just your personal computer, then you can just access it how you would normally with any administration. And then once you're in there, all you need to do is just save the file in this folder. And then if we go back to our SQL Server Management Studio, what you'd need to do now is restore a database. So if you right click on databases and then under here you got restore database click on that and then as we're doing it from a device and not an actual database you click on device and then on the three dots you'll then get this screen and then what you want to do is click on add and then there is the file that you saved and then if you click ok and then ok again it will then load in the file there and then if you do ok it then tell you it's been restored successfully if we do OK and now open up here, we can now see our VentureWorks database is in ready to be viewed. So now we can see the data. Let's have a quick look to see what the actual data looks like on one of these tables just to ensure that we actually have some data. So if we type in select and then star so we can see all columns and then we do from and then let's pick a table. Let's go with fact finance, just drag and drop that in, then highlight and then do execute. We can see the data's in there. Now you know how to install a database from your local system. So now I'm gonna show you how to import a CSV file 
so you can view that in your SQL Server Management Studio. So if we minimize this, what you need to do to import a CSV file is first you need to create a database. So what you want to do is right click database and do add new database. And there's this one, I'm just going to call this one test. You can call it whatever you like. And then if you just do OK, and we then just create you a blank database with nothing in it to be viewed yet. But now you're actually on your database. And the same goes if you wanted to add CSV files to another database that already exists, like this one in particular. All you'd need to do is highlight which database you want. And as we're using the test one as an example here for the CSV, we right click and then we go down to tasks. And now you have the option to import data. But what we want, because it's a CSV, is to import a flat file. So if we go to import flat file, you then get this nice little wizard that makes life a lot easier when you're importing. And then all you need to do is just click next. And then you need to find the location of your data. In this case, I've got mine saved in my documents folder. And if you want to import this CSV data set, the link is in the description below. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the name slightly because it's quite long. So let's just call it that for now. And then once you're happy with what your table name is called, then just do next and then it'll give you a preview of the data. So as we can see here, this is what the data looks like being previewed from there. And just to show that that is the case, let me pull up the Excel file. And as you can see, this is what the data looks like. And that's what it looks like. So we can see that matches up. So we know that's correct. And then once we're happy with that, we do next. And then here you get to pick what the data types are. Now, sometimes it would just randomly pick which ones you want. And as I want this one to be a date, I would actually prefer it to be date than date time. And then for all the other ones where they've done like tiny or small integers, I just want to just click and just get this, the standard integers in for all the numbers. And then I'm going to make that one consistent with all the others there. And then if we do next, now go in progress and then tell you success, and then we can just close. So now that's loaded in, we can then open up our database here under test and go under tables. We can now see there is our table here. And then you can see with the columns and all the different integers and dates and characters. And then if we want to view the data, we just go new query, ensure that it's test up there. And then we can type in select star and then do from. And then pull in our data and then execute. And then we can see the data. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want to continue your analytics journey, please check out these videos over here. And if you have any ideas for any other videos you'd like me to cover, then please leave them in the comments below. And as always, until next time.